Hey, what's up guys, this is Mario. In today's video, I'm gonna go over two trades, uh, a trade that I did with Pinterest, I shorted Pinterest, uh, actually moved in sympathy with Snapchat. Snapchat had a great, incredible earnings, re earnings report. Uh, I believe they had a um, break on number of daily active users, uh, and that because uh, Pinterest and, and, and uh, Snapchat are in the same industry, social media industry, they both tend to move together. Uh, I also am gonna cover uh, DraftKings, uh, first green day trade, and over the last couple of days, DraftKings has been um, a little weird. You know, it, it kind of wants to bounce, but then it sells off. Um, it could be because of the uh, lockout expiration date. Uh, it's hard to really know. Uh, finally, today we had a decent bounce. Uh, we'll see if this continues, uh, but I did trade it. I did day trade this uh, today's move, and I want to kind of go over uh, that trade and how, how I did it. So let's get started. Let me uh, share my screen so we could get started. All right, so let's do this. So pretty much um, Pinterest. I'm gonna go over Pinterest first. Uh, the reason why I traded Pinterest is because um, it gapped up um, in sympathy with Snapchat. And actually, let me show you a, a chart of Snapchat too. So Snapchat had a uh, their earnings report uh, yesterday on October 21st, and they had an incredible earnings report. Uh, they, uh, they had really record numbers of daily active users. Uh, so it, it caused for a huge spike uh, yesterday in the, in the morning. Um, it actually, yeah, when they reported earnings and it literally trended all day. Now, the question that you may ask is why did I short Pinterest, you know, knowing that Snapchat was trending? Uh, and, and the reason why I did it is because the way that Pinterest reacted. Now, keep in mind that when Pinterest gapped up with, uh, with, with Snapchat, now, now I'm looking at Pinterest uh, short, it's based all on speculation. Um, it's based on, hey, if Snapchat had a great earnings report, hey, they had a record number of daily active users, hey, maybe Snap, maybe Pinterest will, will, will have the same when they report. Now, Pinterest reports on, I got it right here, let me kind of go over it, it's right here. They report on October 28th. So I guess the thought process behind this move was that, you know, investors who wanted to kind of, I guess they wanted to get in, in Pinterest before they report, uh, so when they report, uh, they could sell into that move um, and kind of get a, some, sometimes they speculate to get themselves ahead of that move. Uh, you ever heard, um, you know, buying a rumor, selling the news? This is pretty much what was happening with Pinterest. But uh, the reason why I shorted was because when it opened, it opened very strong, but then it started to solve off really quick. So to me, this looked like a, a uh, exhaustion type of move. It's actually exhaustion type of, um, yeah, daily move. Um, not only that, but if, uh, you know, if I look at the daily chart as well, if I put in the, uh, Bollinger Bands, it was, it broke out of the Bollinger Bands. So it's definitely a, a, a gap up, a huge move more than what the you know, market was expected. Uh, now it's the stochastics as well is pretty much hitting already the 80 level, which is considered over, overbought. So that's the reason why I was interested in shorting. Uh, not only that, but it, it didn't really trade with uh, Snapchat. You know, when, when Pinterest was literally starting to sell off um, during this time, during the, the, the mid-morning of, of the uh, market day, uh, Snapchat was still trending. Now, let me show you Snapchat. Snapchat was continued to trend. Um, here you go. Continued to trend. And it kind of uh, stayed up above, uh, you know, it closed a little bit below, below VWAP, but it stayed in, in, in the uh, midpoint area, I guess you could say. But if you can contrast Snapchat, you know, sold off right away below the VWAP and it stayed below the VWAP. So to me, again, this to me looked like an exhaustion move. Uh, it sped up really quickly and it sold off. And I felt like, you know, tomorrow investors are going to probably sell into that move. Uh, and actually, I am a long term investor in, in Pinterest. So, on October uh, 21st, when I heard a Snapchat news, I actually sold some into that move and actually also sold it to a, a Snapchat as well. I also own Snapchat in my long-term portfolio. So those type of moves, uh, investors, uh, whether it be individual investors like myself or big institutional investors sell, tend to sell into. Uh, so that was the thought process behind that. Now, uh, the goal was of course, um, I, I consider it as kind of like a low hanging fruit type of trade. Uh, so I was looking, looking for uh, to trade into like uh, any uh, resistance lines or pivot lines. Now it was a little tricky because uh, 
during pre-market, it was already uh, hitting the midpoint. That's usually the area that I like to start off my first uh, short, uh, but it was too close. So I was looking at outer lines. I was actually looking at 51 and even the first R1, first pivot R1 level. Uh, but I actually, I actually had an order to, uh, with my first uh, sell at 51 and I took it out because there was uh, some news that um, Goldman Sachs was uh, upgraded Pinterest, uh, I believe to 61. So I felt like, you know what, this squeeze could have, this morning squeeze could be bigger than, than just a, a, a move to like uh, 51. Uh, so I felt like, hey, maybe the, the R1 will probably hit. So I took up my 51 and I and put it at 51.35, uh, but I missed it. You know, I missed my entry and, and that's okay, you know, because, uh, you know, the way I thought it went, if, if I would have gotten in at, at uh, if I would have left my 51, I would probably have taken out my, my profits at 50 and I would have called it a day. Uh, and there was this other huge move that happened. So I actually did really good in this trade. Um, and just, just, you, just to keep in mind, guys, when you miss the first move, there's usually a second move. Always remember that. Usually there's a second move if you miss the first move. And it happened here. So because I missed the first move, I didn't bum up. I felt like there was probably going to be, if this is going to continue to sell and go red, it's probably going to be a, a second opportunity. <clears throat> and there was. And I decided to short up there. I noticed that... Um, it was, it created, I started to create lower lows and it was below the VWAP. Uh, so once it created lower lows under, you know, this, this trend line, I decided to put a, a short sell here in the pivot. So that was my first position. I started, uh, my started here and it started to kind of consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. And I felt that, you know what, if this break consolidation happens, if it breaks this low, it creates a lower lower again, this is probably going to go red. So I, I decided to add on, on, on that. So I added to my winner covered in the first move in the 50, uh, 49, 50, and this level, this is level. And I felt like, uh, and also raised my stop. And I, and I uh, decided to kind of keep the trend because I felt like it was going to go red and, and kind of downtrend all day. And it kind of did actually. So uh, my next exit was right here at 49, which is a intraday level. And my next exit was right here at 48, 50. Now I had a, a, a what, they, what I call lotto type of shares. I pretty much had my stop here at my entry, my average entry. And I felt like, you know what? This could probably downtrend all day. And so who knows, maybe a S, uh, a S1, if not even, even lower, even at this next uh, you know, uh, support, uh, S2 support level. So I did keep a couple shares just in case that happened. And uh, it started to kind of consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. And it started to kind of break out of this 49 level, which is a very important level. Um, and then not only that, but the market was starting to grind up. So after I saw the market grinding, I felt like I'm going to put my stop above, above this 49.17 high. If it breaks above that, I'm out. And that's pretty much what happened. And again, the reason why I did this is because I noticed that the market was trending. So in the afternoon, midday move, the market started to trend. The NASDAQ as well as the, the, uh, the SPY. Uh, so I felt like, you know what, this might actually squeeze even higher. So, hey, let me just take my profits and call it a day. And that was pretty much Pinterest. All right. So moving to the next trade, um, DraftKings. <clears throat> let me just get some water. DraftKings has, has been, um, it's definitely been, been very uh, weird. Uh, a lot of it might, might have to do with the lockout expiration that happened on October 20. Um, because um, on October 19, you see this candle is the bullish uh, type of a uh, bullish hammer candle. Um, it, we, I felt personally like we were going to have a bounce, like a pretty bounce, maybe to 50, something like that. But it didn't. It continued to sell off. Now I did trade it on the on the 20th, and I made some I made a couple cents on it. I made a couple um, made a, I made a couple cents on that. Um, but it continued to sell off. And, if, and then today, it finally uh, did a very, uh, what I call a, a W, double bottom type of uh, intraday pattern, pattern that is uh, known to be uh, a, bottom, a bottom indicator. Um, and let me show you guys that. And this is pretty much it. It literally looks like a W. Um, now, this is one of my favorite patterns to trade on a, in a sort of bottom type of trade when, when you get like a, is sell off like this. Um, and again, this is the reason why I wanted to trade this because it sold off so much that I felt like there was gonna be um, a bounce to happen. So this type of trade, uh, not only can you day trade it, but also swing trade it. 
and also uh, invest in it for the long term, for your long term account. Uh, so I, I do own the DraftKings in my long term account. Uh, like I mentioned before, I love to trade. I love to day trade stocks that I own in my long term account. It helps me understand the companies better. Um, you know, I'm not one of those traders who just thinks about tickers. It's just a ticker. Let's look at the price. Actually, no, every single company has a story behind it. If you want to be, if you want to have an edge, if you want to understand how to trade and become a better trader, you have to understand the company's story. Uh, these are real companies. Uh, these are not penny stocks. Penny, penny stocks, I can understand, you know, just trade the price action because most of them are pretty much junk. But companies like DraftKings, Pinterest, Snapchat, they're real companies with real earnings, real money, real customers. So you have to understand the, 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 uh, the story behind each company and that will make you uh, become a better trader. And, and that's why I like to invest in these companies because when I'm invested in, I'm literally invested. I have money in the line uh, for the long term. So it forces me to read into the company's earnings, read into the company's news. And because I do that, I have an edge and I understand what's going on behind it. So I wanted to quickly mention because it's very, very important. So, um, so DK, DK, and DKNG or DraftKings finally um, started to kind of, you know, hold these levels. Um, it it kind of hit up this uh, S1 pivot today and it's uh, 50, uh, 56, 40, 56, and it bounced off that level and it kind of pulled back and it held the, this 41 level and it created that double W uh, bottomy intraday sh shape. And I decided to get in after the 50, uh, 41.50 level broke. It stopped below that, stopped uh, below 41. And I decided to add after it broke uh, this, this uh, downtrend. So if it broke that 41.75 level, I, uh, my thought process is if it breaks that, it's going to trend. So I did. I added, it started to trend. I took profits in the, in the first uh, resistance level, which was this pivot. And I raised my stop from uh, 41 to this level. And decided to hold for the rest, took the rest of my uh, shares at the next resistance level, which is 42.50, raised my stop again. And actually my next uh, uh, place that I wanted to take profits, which actually uh, was an R1, which is 43.13. Uh, it didn't quite get there. Um, and I felt like it was going to get there today uh, to the point that I actually was literally waiting Eva, a minute before the market closed and it didn't get there. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait after hours. Hopefully after hours, it will hit my level. I actually did uh, change my order to sell uh, after hours. And it actually hit the high of uh, 315. But for whatever reason, uh, Interactive Brokers did not fill me. I think it might have gotten confused or something. Who knows what happened? So I had to literally change it and manually sell um, after hours. And I, I think I sold at 408. And now we'll post uh, my fills on the YouTube comments uh, so you guys can see that. So that was pretty much it, guys. Uh, tomorrow, I think there will be a second a second move, uh, low-hanging fruit long. Um, I really think it could break uh, the 44 level and eventually uh, probably hit 50. You know, I think it could hit 50. Uh, but again, we're going to have to see tomorrow. Um, again, the lockout expiration did happen on uh, DraftKings. DraftKings is a, as a, um, it's a uh, IP, recent IPO. It literally went public on April 1st. Um, so this could continue to sell. We don't really know. Uh, I don't really know. You know, investors, institutional investors who bought in, uh, who invested in DraftKings before uh, the IPO might want to sell. Uh, it's hard to really know. So I'm just following uh, technical analysis and the price action and day trading in and, and holding a long-term account. I do believe in the company. I do like the service. I think it's a great company and I think it does have a future. That's why I'm investing in the long-term. And hey, sometimes you get opportunities to day trade these. Uh, so I do like to do both. Love to, I do love to invest in the long-term. And again, it helps me become a better trader. It gives me an edge. And that's pretty much uh, my, my trading process, my thought process. All right, guys, I hope you guys uh, learned something from this video. Um, now, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them below the YouTube comments. Don't forget to hit this, uh, the like button uh, to support the, uh, the YouTube channel. And you guys will see me uh, very soon. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.